What's up guys, it's PJ, and today I'm gonna to show you guys how to make a retro 80s styled chord progression. Step one. Nah, but for real, um, step one's gonna be your tempo. tempo. Pretty much like all 80s like synth type stuff was all made within like 90 to 110 BPM. So, um, I mean, I guess you go like 85, 115, but for the sake of this tutorial, let's just do 100. So next up, we're gonna need like an 80s sounding synth. Um, one of the most popular synths in the 80s was the Juno 106, Juno 60, and the Tau Uno LX V2. Um, is a really good, accurate emulation of that, and we can get very close to like those tones. 80s compositions in general, it's good that you use a polyphonic synth such as the Tau Uno or even like Serum or something to compose in because we're going to use a lot of suspended chords, add chords, you know, like 11th chords, like all these different types of like crazy chords that wouldn't sound really good on like a piano or like other instruments. But they sound great on synths, so that's like another key reason to like check out this plugin. And I'll show you a cool patch that we can compose. So I always compose in the same patch when I'm doing this type of like work. So I'll take off the sub, bring that down. I'll bring the frequency down. I'll turn the envelope up. I'll turn the sustain down. I'll turn the decay up past 50%. I'll put this on envelope. It's close to where I want it, a little bit lower. I'll put on this. There you go. And then I'll add on one of the choruses. 80s. So 80s um, chord progressions, they're not composing any like crazy scale, just like a minor scale is fine. I guess we'll do like, um, I don't know, let's do like a G minor for this tutorial. You can use major as well for like a brighter, like um, poppier type sounding thing, but I'm just going for something a little bit darker. So yeah, so we chose G minor, so let's make our first chord with something in G. So, so right there, that's a C minor chord. But now this is also what's known as a triad because it's only three notes. Typically 80s chord progressions, they contained um, at least like seventh chords for most of the entire chord progression, especially like the first chord in the progression would usually be a seventh. So we just skip another note in the scale. And now we've got something like this. So now I'm gonna extend this chord to like here and I'm just gonna create some more chords in the progression. Again, sticking with seven chords. So the four notes, just skipping every single note. That sounds decent, but it doesn't sound too 80s. So now to get to that 80s sound is what you have to start using what's known as suspended chords. Suspended chords are when you take the middle note of between like the uh, first and the fifth, also known as the third, and then you just kind of like put it to like the next spot in the scale, like either here or here. So I'm gonna put it here because it's gonna align with that C, that root note, and I think it's gonna be a smooth transition. In addition, 80s chord progressions were pretty crazy. They didn't just use seventh chords. They would go to like ninths, uh, elevenths, thirteenths. But, you know, like, again, they were limited by polyphony of the time. Polyphony is the amount of notes that can play at once on the keyboard for the synth. And the Juno 106 had a six-voice polyphony. And we're only we're only trying to use, think of this as, like, um, going to be our right hand playing it. And we're only going to play four notes with our right hand. So we can't play all these crazy notes. So we'll just do, like, one of them. So for simplicity, let's just, instead of doing a seventh, let's do a ninth chord. And you'll see what this sounds like. So I think I have a good idea of where I want to take this progression, but I'm also kind of realized that this transition at the end can be a bit like clunky, especially when you go up so high to the 11th. So I actually want to make this a suspended chord as well so that it's on par with that F and it should sound pretty smooth. So now we've got like this. And to make the transition even better and cooler, to make the second half of the progression like nice, I'm going to actually go down from this original chord this um, ninth chord with the suspension. I don't even know what it would be called, but we're just gonna turn it into a regular seventh chord. And that sounds nice. And then I kind of hear like a little rhythm going on over here. And then for the rhythm, maybe we suspend it. So let's see. Or maybe actually. Bring it down. So 
So one thing I noticed this progression could really use after playing it back is that it could use an inversion about here. And I know it looks like a mess, but trust me, it's gonna sound good in a synth like this. Maybe on a piano it wouldn't sound good. But on a synth like this, it's gonna sound good. And then also it kind of feels like it does resolve over here, but not the way I want it to. So let me just uh, listen to this real quick. Like I hear it going down again, like dun dun. That sounds pretty good. So you're probably thinking to yourself, P yeah. okay, it sounds like it works, but it sounds weak. And it is weak because we're not done with it and we have to make it stronger. So what they would also do is remember it's six voice polyphony. We only have four voices in our right hand. Our left hand needs to play two voices. So we're going to actually be playing the root and the fifth with our left hand. So how do we do that is we, the root notes are always the bottom notes, which is here. I mean, it depends on inversions. If we had inverted something lower, it wouldn't be the root note. And then we also want to take this uh the the uh, fifth which is the note after you skip from the third so here here now remember over here we inverted that d so this is not the fifth this is the fifth the g so this is also the fifth that's the fifth and then that's the fifth and i can already tell you at the end when i was playing it like this kind of felt like it'd be the weaker part especially since it doesn't have like another note to go here so I'm actually gonna do something interesting and I'm gonna change it up. So if you see that F would actually work here because it creates a chord, but if we go down here, then we actually have an entirely um, new chord with D as actually the root note and then A as the uh, fifth. And then if we have the fifth as the uh, bass note, it's, it's just gonna sound so cool. So let me just play this back. So as you can see, it's already pretty A's and cool. I'm gonna actually just spice it up by adjusting the patch. All right, so let me play the original chords real quick now that they're tweaked, and then I'll show you what, what else I did. So I don't know about you guys, but that sounds really good to me. So a classic component of old 80s music, especially involving synths, are arpeggios. So basically, I just did is I took the main patch, I cloned it. Uh, you can see the tweaks here. This one's just a saw wave, and it's literally just an arp in the exact same octave as the original. I just removed the uh, root note and the fifth note in the bass. And I did the same for this one, except it's an, uh, it's an octave higher, and I just used the uh, square wave for it. So it's not like competing like for too much space. Um, it's going to sound like a little rough if I play them all together. So let me just play the arps right now. So it sounds pretty hypnotic and trippy. And like another key aspect to that, uh, to get that sound is to use delay. Delay was used so heavily in the 80s on synthwave music. And so I like to use Valhalla delay or Echo Boy delay because those are um, tape delay emulations. And that's what they had access to. Um, ping pong delay is really great for creating space. I think I mentioned this in earlier touch. You can see the settings here, always 500 cut for the lows and then 1200 Hertz for the highs, because you don't want too many like high frequencies. I was going for like a more lo-fi like type synth um, type sound, maybe like, I guess chill wave would be the term. So we've got that. And then also that you can do, you can add like a baseline, adding a baseline to this is pretty sick. You just follow the already established bass notes from the main progression you created, stick to the root notes, occasionally go up to the fifth and it'll sound pretty dope. Let me play that right now. So I'm gonna turn this into a song and then play it for you guys right now. Five hours later.
All right, gang, that's the beat. Uh, those types of beats take me a hell of a long time to make. Um, I'm really tired. I've got a paper I should be working on. So I'm going to get back to that. And I hope you guys learned something today. I know this was like a weird type tutorial, like making like retro 80s type sound, but it's a huge passion of mine making those types of beats. And I feel like you can definitely pick up something in like the composition aspect with like the suspended chords and like just like making your own melodies and shit like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and peace. Peace.